Okay, so we've got a post-war property, um, brought up to date as you can see with double glazing. It's got a physical damp course in a bitumen type, but there's also been a chemical DPC put into part of the property. And um, during the survey, it's all suspended timber floors. And during this survey, we're getting high readings. That is the gable, the sidewall. We're getting high readings, sort of starting down there and rising up, rising up, and ending up in this cupboard in the corner. Down in the corner there. Um, that's not actually mould, but some mould has been wiped off. There's certainly been mould stains there. There's a little bit of salt and plaster, and there's evidence of some remedial replastering. Somebody's had to replaster that wall in the past. Skirting board's not original, it's actually new. And I've had a meter on that, and the moisture content, even on this side of the timber, is um, well over 20%, about 24%, uh, which is a bit high. Um, if I just take you in the kitchen, this is still the side wall of the kitchen, and what we've got here, I've had a meter on this wall, and it's nice and dry. Um, but it's got polystyrene on the back of the paper, can you see that? That's, that's polystyrene. And there there's mould on the, on the wall underneath, on the, on the surface. So they've had a history of damp problems, that's why they've put that. So condensation has been an issue, there's no extraction in this kitchen at all. Uh, just a little fan over there, well it's not a fan, a little vent. If we go through, there's no extraction in the bathroom, just a little vent up there. There's the shower of course. Um, now, the only walls I'm getting a rising damp profile is this wall, and the rest of the house is dry. So straight away that tells you there must be something at work, there must be something else, because um, damp courses don't really fail selectively in that way, they usually bridge or there's some other problems. So if we walk around outside now and have a quick look, um, we can see that this next turn stairs, the flat above there. So, any water in there, and that's obviously very wet, stuck out in the rain and no proper damp course, look at the state of the brickwork, it's acting like a moisture sink, but that moisture shouldn't be crossing the cavity, should it, there shouldn't be, so there must be mortar droppings in there, now I've had, we're going to put a boroscope in, I've drilled a hole in there, and, uh, and we'll have a look and just see why we're getting readings along this wall, and, uh, and get to the bottom of it. can see immediately that uh, we've got uh, blockages in the cavity. We pan around, we're looking to the left now, and there's some debris down there, look, not far below us. And if we pan around to the other side, cobwebs, and then more debris, and that's level with our mortar bed, so it's well above, all that debris there is well above uh, DPC level, and certainly is uh, allowing transmission of moisture across the cavity and moisture to rise up from the from the ground and bypass the damp course. Typical bridging issue. Um, so it's debatable whether this chemical damp course were needed, um, but uh, we won't get into that one. What we're going to do now is come up with the right remedial solution for the client, which is obviously going to involve some good old-fashioned cavity cleaning. So in conclusion, it's important to bear in mind when you're looking at a uh, property with a physical damp course in, I'd say a bitumen damp course or a slate damp course. Um, are there any bridging issues? So you walk around outside and look at the paths and concrete, things like that. But bear in mind bridging is just as likely to be happening inside the cavity, if it is a cavity. And in those circumstances, um, you will get a rising damp profile. Um, with experience, you can actually get a feel for that kind of profile because it, it, it will be very clearly defined often. Um, you'll also tend to find that it'll be isolated to certain areas and you can get a wall that's apparently bone dry three foot further along, there's a rising damp profile and then that rising damp profile disappears another three foot further along. Now with that sort of thing that should ring bells anyway because why would a damp course fail in that way? So with physical damp courses you tend to find bridging is usually the cause of the damp. Not always, I have come across rising damp in a wall with a physical damp course in, but it's not that common. Um, in this case, I think we've had a history of dampness. Um, there's probably been mould on that wall when the house was occupied. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me because it's solid at the base. There's no cavities there. It's full of, it's full of rubble and mortar droppings. Um, so if there was a bed against it, something like that, that is a bedroom. If there was a bed head against it, you'd get mould behind it. Um, this is why we've ended up with a chemical damp course in it at some point. 
Um, there's been some replastering done, but we're still getting eye readings, and that skirting board on that wall will rot eventually. So my advice in this case to my client is basically clean the cavity. That's the first thing. Then take some bricks out, rake all that rubble out well below DPC level. Um, there may be some replastering to do, unfortunately, because if the damp course that was installed and the plastering that was done was done many years ago, um, we may have a residual salt contamination problem. Um, my client doesn't own this house yet, so I can't start hacking plaster off and taking samples. So we'll take them off about the possibility of that. Um, there'll be a quote for replastering. Um, but in this case, there won't be a quote for a damp course. Um, I may well give the client the um, an option if they want a guaranteed solution, but it'd be more for experience's sake than anything else. Uh, bear in mind also that the ventilation in the property is terrible and I'll be recommending extraction in the kitchen and the bathroom. And then once they've got the cavity clean, they can think about cavity wall insulation. Um, no need for any chemicals. I hope you found this useful. Uh, if you have any queries, do please pop along to preservationexpert.co.uk and ask me any questions you like. Cheers.